everybody what's up what's up what's up welcome to my youtube channel it's me your homegirl adosha wright the author of curly hair adventures what they don't tell you at the hair salon and the beauty and barber survival plan coming to you live and direct from a real hair salon with my new do all right that's right this is uh, my new do for a couple of weeks and this video is all about caring for braids in your hair so I'm, I'm going to take you guys on a journey of how to care for braided hair and it is probably one of the hottest topics um, that gets talked about um, on all these platforms and for certain when people are on my platform they want to know about caring for braids and you know sometimes things you know just kind of get lost in translation so instead of me just always using these little pictures and voice always I said you know what but I'm about to represent, you know. Yeah, you better find another hair that's good as this. Say it, y'all. So you better represent. Come on, y'all, sing with me. Because your hair is the woo bomb, baby, bomb, baby. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you never get some knowledge as good as this, all right? So um, how do you care for this? And so I want to represent how to care for this. I want to help you guys out. And so I'm going to go on this journey with you. So if you have braids in your hair, if you just took your braids out, if you are about to put your braids in, um, then I hope that this is going to be a wonderful little journey. So I'll probably have three parts. So this is the beginning. I'll do a middle, and then I'll do the take down, and, uh, and then what I'm gonna do when I take the hair down. So I'm gonna have all that for you, all right? And then of course, if you like this information, if you like my channel, but you're like, dang, I forgot to hit the bell and subscribe to it, then come on, y'all, and help a sister out. Y'all can't see my legs, but I'm, I'm doing a butterfly, okay? Come on, y'all, help a sister out and do that subscription thing, all right? Okay, let's hop right into the topic. What is it that they don't tell you at the hair salon about braided hair? Um, now, let me just say this. What they don't tell you at the hair salon about braided hair is that a book. <laughs> A book will help you get more uh, personal and more in-depth because as good and as helpful as a lot of these videos um, on these platforms are, a lot of times, unfortunately, they still kind of get lost in translation. So a book will take you a little bit deeper and make things a little bit more personal. So a shameless plug that if there's something in these videos that you are missing or you just want to get more personal, you don't want to put your questions in the chat, then please download the book or get the book and it will take Take you, you know, like Bushwick Bill, take you to that other level. You know what I'm saying? All right. So, um, first things first. In chapter three, it's going to be our helpmate. Um, chapter three in my book is about the plight of textured hair. And so, right now, this is the plight of textured hair. Right here, this hairstyle. So, this hairstyle is considered what? And you can type it in the chat. And let's have fun. Let's make these channels, let's make my channel more interactive. So type in the chat, what is this hairstyle called, okay? Uh, I'm going to turn around so you guys can see what this, let me just move up close so y'all can see my little, you know, my little doo-doo, okay? So to those of you who don't know me, um, this is white, of course. <sighs> that's my real hair, you know, that's my real hair. This right here is the color of my, the artificial color of my hair. Okay, I'm turning around some more. You guys want to see the kitchen. Everybody want to see kitchens in the videos, okay? So there's my kitchen. If you don't know what the kitchen is, it's a little, you know, funny term. And you're from the hood, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we say the kitchen, okay? I don't know. I got to find uh, the history of why we call it the kitchen. So here are the sides, okay? And I'm going to hold my head down so you can see that. And then I'm going to turn my head in case some of you are wondering, what in the hell? Okay, so this is an undercut. I know it needs to be cut. Don't put that in the chat okay um so no, i'm just kidding um so yeah so this is my undercut that needs to be cut all right so there you saw it that was a, a depiction of my hair so in the chat i hope i've got some comments going okay so um in the chat hopefully you have put down two things that these are called box braids slash extensions and maybe or maybe some of you have put down that this is called a natural hairstyle so if you put um, uh, box braids or extensions, you are absolutely right. 
If you put natural hairstyle, you are emphatically 100% wrong. And therein lies the problem, okay? So first thing I want you guys to understand about any hairstyle that has artificial hair, be it human hair or plastic as this hair right here, it is not a natural hairstyle. And I know that there's this big push that any hairstyle that you don't chemically alter um, or physically, like with heat, you know, pressing combs and flat irons and stuff, is considered natural hair. And again, it's a lie. It's, please, guys, don't believe the hype. So here's what they don't tell you at the hair store. And I'm telling you guys this, if you have my book, if you've been following me, y'all like, that's why LaDosha, she the coldest on the platform because she breaks it down like no other, okay? So here's the thing. Hair is protein. It has three layers. And there are a few things that affect these three protein layers. The outer layer is your cuticle, you know, your protein or uh, uh, keratin layer, and it's responsible for how your hair feels and shines and manageable. The second layer is your cortex, that's where your color and your strength. The third layer, uh, some some uh, research says the verdict is out. Other research says it's like a bridge, a gap between the physiology that takes place when you do things to hair, okay? So now when you go to braid hair, you are going to change the physical state of the hair. Number one, you're going to move these outer cuticle layers that makes the hair manageable and it makes the hair, you know, your fingers glide through it when you braid, okay, that's one. Two, when you go to crisscross and clamp the braid down, you are going to change, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're going to rotate the disulfide bonds that makes the hair curly, straight, coily, you see what I'm saying, or wavy, all right? Now, if you put products on top, like waxes, and I'm gonna go into that, your waxes or your gels, again, you're gonna cause a physical, a, a, a true, actual physical reaction is going to happen. Anything wet, it could be water, gel, whatever, that goes on this top cuticle layer, it's going to lift, okay? If your hair is like mine, fried, dyed, and laid to the damn side, okay? Then whatever I put in it is going to go to the second layer because my hair is already compromised because I have blonde in it. Okay, so you have to do some unique things to my hair when you braid it because I have pre-lightened hair. Um, I'm over 50, you know, so I'm aging. My hair is softer. So there are some things that needs to take, you know, some really good consideration when you're going to braid my hair with, with or without added hair to it, all right? Are you guys walking with me? Now, if you're liking what I'm saying so far, come on and drop me some questions in the chat, and I want my site, you know, my channel to be a lot more interactive. I really wanna help you guys out. And of course, a lot of these answers, and on an intimate, personal level, you can get this out of my book, okay? And the book, all of that stuff is in the link. So now, we understand that the biggest lie that they ever did was call this stuff a natural hairstyle. This is not a natural hairstyle. And a lot of people who do these styles, they really think it's just this fiber that you just grab some hair and you either pull tight or don't pull too tight, dip it in some hot water, you know, put some mousse on it or, you know, gel, whatever you want to do. And you can slide your fingers and call them stitch braids and voila, no, boo boo kitty, it don't work like that, okay? Um, you have to understand that anatomy. So I just broke that down why that's important. So let's take, for example, my hair, I'm aging. So what happens, as your hair ages, whoops, the mouth of the follicle shrinks, so does the hair. Now, some people have sections of their hair that are thinning more in places than others, so you need to get that consultation to determine which braids are the best braids and which product to use, and hopefully your braider has a plethora of products that they have accessible to braid various types of hair in various conditions. 
Now, in our salon, I'm not even, I ain't even making this up. We must have over like 20, 20 um, that I could just at a glance, and it could be more because we understand that no two heads of hair are alike. So in that plight, which is a chapter three of textured hair, I'm addressing that a little bit more on an intimate level. And this is why I implore you to get the book if you wanna go to another level, be it as an everyday person and what I call real hair on real people in real life, or, and if you are a licensed professional or a braider and some things ain't just registering, you see some stuff, but you just like, I don't know what's going on. I keep trying to tell this person, but I don't know what to do. My book is going to help you get there and prayerfully you'll get some more education, okay? So let's talk about what these products do. So number one, um, you have a series of products that you can use to braid hair. And the most common are going to be your, I put my finger over because you know it's from the hood, okay? Um, so you've got your shine, y'all quit laughing at me, okay? Um, so you have your, your shine jam, okay? Um, or you do gel. So some people, depending on what they're doing to the hair, they'll use some type of a, like a gel, not a pure gel, or they'll use some type of a wax. Um, then also you have people like, I grew up, you know, and you know, like I said, I'm from down the way, I ain't ashamed to say it. Um, so we, we braided hair wet because we didn't have blow dryers. That was like, so all this blow drying hair dry, I'm like, I don't know nothing about that, okay? So when I grew up, we washed hair and we just we just went at it. And as it started drying, as it blow dried, you guys, as the air dried it, we just kept calming it and pinning it down. But we did have, you know, gels and stuff to kind of help the hair stay tight as it dried. Um, but you had to be rich to get it. We had pre-con gel. We have all this fancy uh, Ampro, you know what I'm saying, okay? If you know about the pre-con gel, put a happy face, you know, in the chat. Um, then we also have some good old-fashioned, you know, Vaseline or just hair grease. So, so you see, um, when it comes to manipulating this fiber, you have culture, and then um, you also have, you know, these uh, systems or practices that various braiders or natural hairstylists do. Again, it is important that you get that consultation to find out. If a person is braiding your hair and they're not giving you a consultation, they just have you bringing in all these bags of hair and you washed your hair and you went in and then you just sat in the chair and started braiding it, um, let me just... Let me just take a little, let me just flatulate my liquid. Don't do it, Gina. Don't do it, don't. Listen, hey guys, this hair thing is some serious business because if you sit in that chair and that person does not take into account any hair conditions, number one, that's gonna be a problem. Number two, if that scalp has any debris left on it, I mean, if it's got flakes, if it's got buildup, if you got hair grease on, if it's too dry, you know, maybe you didn't put, I didn't put anything on it for your information. Put down, home girl, that's even worse. So what happens? So here is, this is on all humans, race ain't got nothing to do with it, okay? So this is your sebaceous gland. So if you go to the hair salon or to your braider and your hair is already clean and you're proud to say, I ain't put nothing on it, okay? Uh, you're gonna have a problem because your scalp makes its own oil, right? And this sebaceous gland is gonna, you know, it gets signals from like, you know, messengers and, you know, axons and all this stuff, dentrites and neurons and all this neurotransmission is taking place, communication. We can't see it, we can't feel it, okay? So if the scalp is really dry, the, the oil will secrete, the sebaceous gland will secrete more oil, more oil. And if the scalp is too dry, then what happens is the scalp will pull the moisture from your hair. So now you have your braider that's braiding your hair in two states that could not be the most conducive or in the best health 
for the hair to be braided healthy. Number one, the scalp could be in a state of too much oil and they're adding this stuff on it. The hair isn't cleansed properly. Houston, we got a problem. Or the scalp is so severely dry, it's, it's already beginning to pull moisture from the hair to protect the skin that's protecting what? All of this mechanism that's underneath. So that's why the education uh, for natural hair braiders, I'm always pushing. So you need to like do your Google reviews. You need to just ask a simple question. Do you offer a consultation? The consultation could be just as simple as looking at your hair, asking you what do you want, what are you using on it, or it could be really in depth, but you need a consultation, okay? All right, so we have that out the way. Now we're gonna get into uh, uh, the various types of waxes. So you have all different types of waxes, okay? So um, for my hair, I used um, the Edge. It's in my own product line. Because of my age, my hair is starting to thin and my hair is chemically altered. I need a real cheap, flimsy wax. So this is very light. You cannot slay edges with it in spite of the title, but y'all know me, I keep it 100. So it's not going to slay and make the edges nice and sleek, and I cannot have that. So my braider, who's also my colleague, had no problem Let me know, Miss Dosha, because you know she cute and everything, and I'll put her link in the feed. You can find her on Instagram at Quiet Storm Braids, okay? So she already let me know that this is what I was going to, she was going to be braiding my hair with is this one, okay? Then you have some, the standard one that's really, really popular that people like to use is your shine jam it's not too thick not too thin but again if you was to use this um, on a person with hair in my condition or hair that's really soft when you take the braids down oh lord that, that a lot of hair is going to come out you're going to see that we're going to talk about why then you have your high end or your salon quality version of those so this is an example you have design Essentials light and then mega like edge controller and some people braid with this one and it's a little bit better quality it's not as um you know, um, slippery. It doesn't have as much oil as your shine, shine jam. Then you have edge effect. Very powerful hold. Again, you need your hair needs to be in really, really good condition. The scalp needs to be cleansed and moisturized. You can't be thinning or bald, and you most certainly better not have no light color hair like mine, or else you're gonna have a problem. So make sure that you're in your consultation, they are asking you these types of questions, or at least making a determination of which one is best. You can ask for something to slay or lay or make it hold tighter. But remember, you have to understand what what's taking place to these cuticle layers. So the, the young ladies who braid hair here at the Reverence Design Team Hair Salon, and all of us rather, we see hair like this. We don't see hair like this, okay? When we see the scalp, we don't see the scalp like this. We see the scalp like this because people who come to our hair salon they actually want hair so we have a different premise for caring for and styling hair simply because the people who come here are interested in having longer thicker stronger hair so we have to do things a little bit differently okay um, next up is how I am going to care for my hair at night so at night I will put this in a ponytail not the whole thing um, I will ponytail maybe like this much down and then I am going to sleep in a bonnet now y'all know I'm single out here so I hope y'all this ain't my future husband looking at me my future view thing I don't believe in marriage um, but I hope my, my future sweetie pie uh, you guys call him husband won't be like you look like <laughs> you know um, uh, what's her name? Uh, the uh, Red Riding Hood, the wolf that was going to eat her up, okay? Um, so you look like that wolf off of uh, <laughs> the, the Looney Tunes, okay? You got to be old enough to know about Looney Tunes, too. So I put everything underneath, okay? Now, the beauty of this 
is that I can sleep very comfortably tonight without the hair all over my head. Because what they don't tell you at the hair salon, these braids are really heavy. So when you put this stuff, this added hair into your head, it's really heavy. The scalp, you know, is going to feel different, especially if you're not used to having braids in your hair. You might even think it's too tight when really it's probably that you're just not used to having the, the hair tug. Because remember when you braid the hair, and you guys who follow me already know where I'm going with this, the erector pillar muscle. Right, okay. All right, so put that in the chat. You know, the erector pili muscle is the muscle that gets pulled when you braid hair. So that phenomenon of it, of it being tight is not a joke. And sometimes when you put products on the hair as it dries, like your gels and those waxes, as it dries, it will harden. So you will get a little extra tug, you know, on that scalp. So when people say, um... I went and got my hair braided and then the next day or I woke up or a few hours later, it, it felt like my hair was getting tighter. You're right because the product is drying, number one, and then it's setting. And then number two, your muscle is responding to the hair that's what, tightening up. So you're not tripping, you ain't funny acting, you ain't bougie, okay? You're human, all right? How's that, okay? So the bonnet is good. Uh, number three, make sure you do not do a hot, steamy shower. Please don't do this because if you do, the moisture is going to cause your braid, your set, your uh, waxes or creams or whatever they use, it's going to loosen that up. So just take a regular shower and, and uh, you know, don't have the temperature up too high because the moisture will loosen up all of your work, okay, or the stylus work. So don't do that, all right? And if you're just like, oh, no, I work too hard, no problem, I got you, then just put a towel on top. And then that way, the towel will absorb the moisture and you will protect your natural hair. Because remember, um, this hair is not natural, okay? So uh, that concludes my video. I will be back uh, in a few days to show you how I clean my hair every day, two, three, four, five, no, three times a day, I do spray my hair. Whoops, I uh, fell up in here. Um, let's see if it's something here. Oh, here we go. So I do spray my hair with the satin tang. All right, so let me guys, let me show you guys how I do that. So I spray this. The objective is it's gonna just kind of keep the product nice and set. It's also going to reduce that friction from the braid in my natural hair. It's also gonna keep my hair supple. All right, it's also going to help with the odor because I'm exercising and I'm trying to get rid of some of this fat. So it's gonna help, you know, kill those odor causing bacterias that makes your hair musty after you work out. Those are odor bacterias. Um, the sweat, we'll talk about how I cleanse it, you know, with the sweat. We'll talk about that in the next video. Um, but this is just to get started. So I spray this all over. I don't just put this on my regrowth and it feels really good. It's cold here in Cleveland, so I do wear a hat. Okay, so that's how I care and I make sure I get my little stuff over here, okay? So spray the whole braid down because my hair is about, you know, about this long. So I'm gonna spray it down and it helps keeping the hair look nice and neat. It will not compromise um, the artificial hair, okay? It won't cause it to soften up and break, all right? Okay, guys, it's getting dark here. I'm sure you guys are like, what's going on with that video? All right, so I hope you all have found this very helpful. Drop your questions in the chat. I will put the information to the braider um, in, the, in the link as well, okay? And you know what I say when I'm always signing out, right? Oh, if you like the braids too, hit the thumbs up. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Oops, sorry, I sprayed something up my nose. <laughs> sorry. Um, uh, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, all right? Please check out my podcast. It's been ranked 
as one of the top 25 hairstylist podcasts to listen to in 2021. All right, and it's affectionately called What They Don't Tell You at the Hair Salon. All right, guys? And you know what I say when I'm always signing out, right? I'm talking about a whole lot of love, a whole lot of peace, and a whole lot of fake hair. <laughs> and if you ain't got no fake hair, don't want no fake hair, can't stand fake hair, you plan on cutting off your fake hair, you know, or you can't even grow it, but you like watching hair, fake hair porn, don't worry about it. Just rub your beautiful, beautiful bald head. Why? Because bald heads are beautiful too. Bye. Thank you. I really hope you guys have found this helpful.